Is Kylo Ren the real hero in The Force Awakens? Hi guys, I'm going to talk to you today about my theory and I'm going to basically talk, I'm going to have to make a few assumptions about the history of Kylo Ren before the movie starts, but I'm going to back up those assumptions with some evidence based on the movies and hopefully by the end of this video, the next time you watch The Force Awakens, you're going to be watching it with a whole new perspective. So let's get started. First thing, I have to make a few assumptions about a young Ben Solo. We know he was training with Luke, his uncle, to become a Jedi, so he was not born evil. He's also referenced in the books as a young child uh, that's off training. He's not evil, he's, he's basically good th through the majority of his time as a child while he's doing his training. We know he was good, we know he had the light in him, and then at some point things went sour. These are just things that we know. So this was probably, here's one of my assumptions, this, the time of him falling to the dark side or going sour is likely around the time that Snoke showed up because Han Solo already knows and he talks to Leia, they talk about Snoke, so they know who he was. My estimation here is that this is very similar to the story of a young child who gets involved in a bad crowd, be it a gang or some bad friends, and, uh, and ends up taking a wrong turn in life. Um, in this case, instead of a gang, perhaps it was the Knights of Ren. Uh, but for whatever the cause, he ended up taking a wrong turn. Now, he follows this turn down to a certain point now in place of maybe... If, if this were a gang scenario, there might be a kingpin or somebody who was in charge of all that that represents the depth of how deep they've gotten into. In this case, seems like Snoke represents that depth. Now, I also believe that, this is another assumption, I believe that Snoke has power over Kylo Ren, similar to when Darth Vader talks about how he must obey his master in Return of the Jedi. I believe Snoke has a hold over Kylo Ren. It's not absolute, but it is much stronger than the audience realizes. And I believe he's leveraging that control at certain times throughout the film. And I'm going to talk about those certain times. Also pay attention to certain times where the mask comes off versus when the mask is on because I'm going to cite some differences that you'll notice during those times. And then the last assumption I'm going to make is that Snoke is basically able to stay in near constant contact with Kylo Ren through the Force. Not a two-way communication always, but more of a presence or a kind of watching him. And at several times throughout this, I'll talk about how I think Snoke is always watching him. So first, I want to talk about the first scene when they land on Jakku and Kylo Ren gets off of the shuttle and he proceeds to have some dialogue with Lor Santeca and he cuts him down. So everything about this scene is basically Kylo Ren being the traditional bad guy, just being completely bad. And I think the reason for this, if he is actually a hero or a hero who or a challenged youth who's trying to become the hero, then I, I think this is he's got all the eyes on him. So this is kind of like the scene that would be almost like an undercover police officer infiltrating a drug ring. Everybody's there watching. You have to still, you still have to be evil. Every, all eyes are on him. He couldn't spare those people. Otherwise, it might get back to Snoke that his new apprentice was going soft. So I think this just sets the stage for the movie. And I think it also sets the stage for your expectations of this character. And as well as everybody is watching him, so he can't really deviate from the established character in front of everyone else. It's not until later when we get him by himself that some of his true nature as the emerging hero will show up. Next, right after he gives the order to execute, he notices Finn. He's, see, he, and the thing is, he's in touch with the light and he notices the light side within Finn and his reluctance to kill. If Kylo Ren was truly the villain, he would have disciplined Finn or perhaps killed him on the spot. But when he, he sensed that light side connection and chose not to kill him, in fact, he doesn't even say anything to anyone. I think this is the inner hero where he's keeping tabs. He, he's trying to isolate points of light within the First Order and have potentially uh, somebody to fall back on or somebody that he might need at some point. He also doesn't kill Poe. And this is important because he's reading Poe's mind. He gets all the information he needs from Poe, but he's very, very interested to learn that Poe is a member of the Resistance. He says the best pilot in the Resistance, but the key there is that this is an actual Resistance member. Now, if you'll take notice, later in the movie, they find they trace where the Resistance is going. Right now, they don't know where the Resistance base is. And one of the things that Kylo Ren, if he is truly Ben Solo inside, is trying to get back to the Resistance because that's where 
where his parents are, that's where all his connections are, he's going to want to get back. And one of the things he will need is a way back. And Poe represents a way back to the Resistance. So that's another reason why he doesn't kill him. There's a lot of reasons why he might want to just kill him if he was truly an evil person. But he doesn't kill him and he keeps him alive. I want to also talk about that, you know, he gets the, the location of where this map is. The map is going to be a very, very important thing for him because he, the map is to Luke Skywalker. Now he trained, that's his uncle, he trained with Luke Skywalker and he knows the power of Luke Skywalker. So much like a runaway child who wants to come back, he is going to need to go back to Luke if he wants to break free of the hold that Snoke has over him. Luke is going to be the only person that can do that. So he very, very much wants to get that map and go back to Luke Skywalker. He's not doing it because it's Snoke's will. He's doing it because he needs to find his uncle again. That's the, I think that's the only way that he can actually overthrow his master to beat Snoke is with Luke's help. But he can't let on that that's what he's trying to do because then Snoke could easily just have him reassigned or potentially do something much more terrifying to Kylo Ren if Snoke was aware of what Kylo Ren was planning. So next, Poe and Finn escape. Now this is a big deal because you see at this point uh, Kylo Ren is close to getting the map. He got the information he needed from Poe and then the map is down on the planet and they're gonna they're closing in that they know what kind of droid it is. He got the information in his mind he's very very close to finding the map to Luke Skywalker and as soon as he does that he can take off and go find him. But after the escape they've ruined his opportunity because the BB unit is gone and then a YT-1300 flying out of there so you know, it, it brings up all these emotions of dad, and it also really makes him angry with Finn because in his mind, first Finn represented potentially a spark of light, so maybe even a little bit of hope, and now that hope is shattered and he's betrayed. I think he felt almost a connection to this guy. Now this guy turns around and frees Poe, which was his link back to the Resistance, and is also responsible for BB-8 being gone, so now the map is gone. So he's lost everything, and he is furious because he's trying so hard to get back to Luke Skywalker, or to get home, and everything is gone now, so he takes out his rage. He's He's not, he's not perfect, he's still definitely tempted between the light and the dark, but he's, he's emerging, he's trying to get back to the light, but you'll see parts of dark still show up in him. And his desire to get this map is even further explained when he talks to Hux, and Hux is like, well, we can always just destroy it, and he's like, no, you're going to make sure that your people get destroyed. He insists, and he even threatens, or it's an implied threat towards Hux, is like, you will not destroy that map. Even though Snoke said, you can destroy it. If you can't capture it, then destroy it. So orders from Snoke are to destroy it, but he kind of supersedes that and says that we are going to capture it because I want that map. Now, Hux is kind of catching on to him, and I think Hux realizes what's going on, but Hux doesn't necessarily have the authority to dime him out specifically. So Hux is playing his cards very carefully. So then we're talking with Supreme Leader Snoke, and Hux suggests using the weapon. So this is an important part, because Kylo Ren is noticeably shaken when Hux suggests using the weapon. And you can see his reaction when you watch the scene. He's, he's not happy with this. And he can't voice his concerns right now because Snoke is right there and actively engaging both him and Hux. And he's got to keep his poker face strong. So it does imply that Ren has discouraged the use of the weapon before. However, due to Hux asking permission directly from Snoke, it's almost like an employee going over his boss's head straight to the CEO. And as soon as Snoke gives the approval, Ren and Hux both look at each other. And this look says, so much. It speaks volumes because it's like Hux is like the jerky brother looking at the at the other brother saying, ha ha, I got mom and dad to side with me. Because now this just basically makes you think that they've had this discussion before and Kylo Ren has said, no, we're not going to use this weapon. Now here's the thing. If that's true, and it certainly seems that way, it seems like Kylo Ren did not want to use the weapon. This is the light. This is the hero within. I've had some people say, well, no, Kylo Ren couldn't be a hero because he stood by and he, he was an enabler and he stood by and did nothing when they blew up all those systems. And I say, no, you, you can see right here that he has definitely tried in the past to stop this weapon. And here was a situation where he was powerless to stop it and to verbally oppose it in front of Snoke would have meant his own demise and would stop any plans he had. So he had to go along with it at this point, although you could see he was not happy with it. 
So then shortly after, we see him praying to his grandfather. Now, this is a very, very important scene, and it can be taken a lot of different ways, but I'm going to give you my interpretation of this scene. First off, he says, forgive me. And I believe he's asking for forgiveness for the civilian casualties on Jakku. Like I said, he did not want to have to kill them, but he had all eyes on him, and he had to. So here he is confessing. He's asking for forgiveness for all of those murders. He did give the order, and he felt he had to, and I understand that. And he's asking here, uh, during this whole prayer sequence, he's asking for help from Anakin. He feels the light. He feels the light within him, and Snoke is aware of it, and he asks to be shown the power of the darkness so he'll know just how far Snoke's reach can go. He needs to know his enemy. He needs to know how strong his enemy is, and he wants to finish what you started. Well, Vader didn't start anything, right? And so what does he mean by finish what you started? Now, the audience at the time might have just thought he was trying to just be evil like Grandpa, but finish what you started. Now, Anakin started something when Anakin overthrew his master, when Anakin threw the Emperor down. I think that's what he wants help finishing. He wants help finishing his return to the light. And Here's another thing, too. He couldn't be praying to Darth Vader because Darth Vader doesn't have a ghost. If he's praying, it certainly appears that he's done this multiple times, he has to be talking to Anakin Skywalker's ghost, which we see at the end of Return of the Jedi. There's no Darth Vader Force ghost. It's Anakin. This is the good guy he's talking to. He's talking to his good grandpa ghost. He's not talking to evil Vader ghost because there is no evil Vader ghost for him to talk to. So he's definitely talking to Anakin and he's trying to get help returning to the light. So if you see this and you think he's trying to become more evil, I say no, there is no evil spirit to guide him there. He's only talking to the good. The next scene I want to talk about is on Taco Donna when he confronts Rey for the first time. Now, he could have totally killed her here. He had no reason to save her, but this is the light side showing, and he generally doesn't kill unless he absolutely has to. This guy actually spares an awful lot of people, which is another reason why I say he's the hero. If he were the villain, he would be killing people as often as he could, and he's not a killer. He's not. He is a sparer. He spares people even when he doesn't have to. So he takes her back and says, oh, you're my guest, and they start to have a discussion. And this is a very interesting scene because at a certain point, he takes off the helmet. And this is where everything gets really interesting. So I'm starting, I'm starting to develop a pattern here uh, that when he takes his helmet off, that means Snoke gets closer. And I think perhaps the helmet serves to kind of limit Snoke's access to reading his mind or connecting with him through the Force. I don't know if the helmet has some type of Force relationship built into it, or if the helmet is more, if it's more just symbolic. But I want you to notice what happens when he takes the helmet off. So he continues his discussion with her, and after he's taken the helmet off and he's trying to read her mind, he says to her, don't be afraid. I feel it too. Now that's not something a villain says to an enemy. What could Kylo Ren feel that also makes Rey afraid, if not Snoke? Snoke is there. Again, this is, this is where Snoke begins listening in again. His presence is in the room, and Kylo Ren is aware of it, and that's why he's saying, don't be afraid. He's being good right here, but he feels Snoke's presence. Basically, he takes the helmet off, Snoke is able to kind of home in on him and get a closer view. So when he's trying to read Rey's mind, she pushes back against him. And this is a very, very interesting scene because she says to him, you're afraid. The first thing she gleams from him is that he's afraid. And he is. He's actually terrified because he is in way over his head and he's trying to get this map, reach his uncle and fight this incredibly powerful Snoke, all while being constantly monitored by Snoke. So it's naturally, it is terrifying. And she says you're afraid that she'll never be as powerful as Darth Vader. Now, she's close. She's not an expert at mind reading, but he is trying to be as powerful as Anakin, or maybe as strong as Darth Vader in the suit was at the time to be able to beat his own master. Well, of course, now he's, he's afraid he's not going to get the map. It's why he's afraid. It's not that he just seeks power. That's not something to make somebody afraid. Nobody gets afraid that they're not going to be as strong as somebody else, but people do get afraid that they're going to be found out, or that they're not going to be able to defeat this evil, super evil Snoke guy, right? So he's definitely afraid of that. 
And he's also afraid that Snoke is going to find out because his helmet is off right now. And he said, don't be afraid. I feel it too. He feels Snoke is in the room and he doesn't want Snoke to find out what, what he's really thinking. So that's another thing that he's afraid of. He doesn't want to get caught. Now, now this jumps right into the next scene where he is adamantly defending keeping her alive to Snoke. Again, he doesn't want to kill. He's not an evil guy. Uh, and he's definitely, he's definitely trying to justify keeping her alive. Snoke was absolutely listening. And then that's why they're having this discussion right now because Snoke was there listening in the whole time. And then Hux comes in like the wicked older brother to try to get Kylo Ren in trouble for keeping Rey alive. And Kylo Ren likely plans to get the map from her and then immediately go to Skywalker. Perhaps even bring Rey with him since he knows he'll probably need allies to defeat him. Snoke then tells him, bring her to me. And I'm convinced that Kylo Ren had no plans to actually do that. He was going to make his escape with her. I mean, why else would he put his helmet on right then and there? Because the next time you see him, he's got his helmet on. Now it seems even more and more apparent that when the helmet is on, his mind is shielded from Snoke. And so he would put, all right, if I'm going to do this, I need to put the helmet on so that I can get away and he won't be able to track me or he won't be able to know exactly what my plan is. And then when he gets there and he finds her, he falls into a fit of rage. Uh, like I said before, he's not perfect. He does still struggle with the dark side a little bit, but here he does not kill anyone. In all of his fits of rage, he's only damaging machinery. And of course, he's angry because his plan just came crashing down. He was going to make his escape. This was his moment. And now she's gone. So not only has he lost the map, he's also lost her. And he got dressed up for nothing. So while he's going off in this fit of rage, it's also important to realize that He's only damaging Star Killer base. He's not actually hurting any people. So wouldn't it be funny if he managed to sever a power coupling or something and it caused the weapon to fail? Oh darn, you know, see secret plans of a hero. So then it's not too long after this that we see him confront Han Solo. And this is a very, very, very powerful scene. Uh, I definitely believe that Han Solo was in many ways an absentee father for him. So he has a lot of issues with Han, despite dark side or light side in, in a lot of the, in the books that are out there. Han Solo was out doing a lot of things, wasn't that involved in his son's life, not as involved as he should have been perhaps. And so there's naturally going to be some confrontation regardless of the, the force's influence. And so they're a little, he's a little standoffish with him at first, but I'm making the point that Kylo Ren did not kill Han Solo. I believe Snoke takes control of him and, and basically forces him to do it. And this is kind of the nuclear option because, in, in, in I'm gonna, and I'm going to explain why I say Snoke took control over him and hopefully you'll understand my point. He was trying to flee Snoke's influence with his father's help, but Snoke straight up took control of him at that moment where the light went out. And I'm saying Snoke is literally inside his mind at this point. Because he even feels it with the, I'm being torn apart. He wants to be free of this pain. And his father's, I'm going to help you. He goes to hand his lightsaber over. What villain hands over his weapon to his enemy? He is the hero. He's trying to break free. And it's not easy when your opponent can mind control you. Yes, Star Killer Base at the time was draining a star. But it was a gradual drain. The lights don't go out just like that. I'm saying was the moment where the light goes out is Snoke coming in, snatching all the light out of the room and taking over Kylo Ren because it is at that moment where he was about to leave and then he doesn't. That's Snoke taking over him and exercising influence over him. He did not actually intend to kill his father and I don't believe it was his own free will that did that. I believe that was Snoke that forced that to happen. So once the murder of Han Solo is complete, Snoke then releases his control over Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren then flees after Rey. He now has to get away. Nobody's going to believe him anymore. He's definitely totally messed up because he just killed his father. Even though he didn't do it intentionally, he just killed his father and he's got to get away now. Snoke has kind of done the nuclear option and he's got to escape. And he's got to escape before Snoke's influence grows any stronger over him too. So when he finds Finally meets up with Ray. He says, "We're not done yet." And he, then he says, "It's just us now." Even though Finn is right with him, he doesn't mean we're going to duel. He means it's just us now. It has to be. He needs to take her and go find Luke. Once they get in a shuttle, he can then read her mind. He and, if, and he can knock her out if she resists or whatever. He just needs to get away now before Snoke 
can take any more control of him. He doesn't have time to explain to her what all is going on, and besides, she just saw him kill Han Solo, so she's not gonna believe him or be inclined to listen to him anyway. So Rey starts to shoot at him, he deflects it, and has to knock her out. He realizes right away, okay, she's not coming with me, I'm just gonna have to knock her out. Now, he could have killed her, but he is not going to kill her because he want, he needs her, he needs the map, he needs to get to Luke, and he wants her alive. He wants a light side ally. But then Finn, the traitor, the, the betrayer, the guy who ruined everything, Finn has been a thorn in his side forever. So what does Finn do? Finn pulls out Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. He says, oh, that belongs to me, right? This was the good lightsaber. This was Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. and. Having a blue lightsaber is going to definitely help him make the journey back to the light. He needs this almost as much as he needs to get to Luke. He's got to have that lightsaber. And now it's in the hands of this guy who just ruined everything. So here's another struggling moment. You're not going to have time to talk about it. This guy's furious. And also, Finn's not going to let you take Rey. He's got to take Rey. Finn's obviously not going to let him. So they have to fight. And the thing is, he could have totally wiped the floor with Finn, but he's taking it easy on Finn, trying to disarm him. He does disarm him and just knocks him out. He doesn't kill Finn. I mean, he does more. He injures him pretty badly. But he could have easily killed Finn. And as soon as Finn was down, but still alive, he left him. Now, if you're a real bad dude, wouldn't you cut off his head or just or finish him or just give him the, you know, the double tap? No, he doesn't do that. He's not killing anybody that he doesn't have to. He just needs to subdue somebody who stands in the way of him getting to Luke, joining forces with Luke and killing Snoke because Snoke is in the business of blowing up entire star systems. So if you have to knock somebody out to do that, sure, doesn't make you a bad guy. That makes you a hero. So he's disarmed Finn, he wants to take the lightsaber, that's one of the things he needs. He needs the blue lightsaber to be a good guy again. Again, this is the emerging hero. And before he can't take it, it goes to Rey. Rey takes it. And now if you'll notice, I want you to watch this scene again because as soon as Rey has the lightsaber, he's staring at her kind of in disbelief. He didn't even realize that she was this strong with the force that she could do that. But she ignites her lightsaber first. He does not even turn on his lightsaber. He didn't want to fight her, but she turned on the lightsaber. She started the battle, so he had to defend himself. And again, here is another fight where he could have beaten her, but he does not. He is trying to talk to her in the battle. And that's when he says, you need a teacher. I can show you the ways of the Force. He does not say, I can show you the ways of the dark side. He doesn't say anything about the dark side because he is not a bad guy. He's a hero. He's trying to get Rey on the side of the light and properly trained because he's going to need her and Luke to defeat Snoke. So I've said all that I can say about it. The last step is for you to go watch this movie again. Go watch episode seven, The Force Awakens, and look at this. Look at all of the conflict within this guy. Look at him and Hux and how they hate each other because Hux wants to blow up and kill people and Kylo Ren doesn't want to. Look again at when Kylo Ren takes off his mask. That's when Snoke is able to have his presence come in there and manipulate and introduce fear and ultimately take over over Kylo Ren completely. Watch it again and tell me he's not a hero. He is the hero of The Force Awakens. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and click the bell to get alerts when I put up new content. And if you wouldn't mind, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.